When Onal was declared the Baroness of Master Fountains, I was mildly annoyed. In an egalitarian, equal-footed fortress like mine, where everyone was supposed to live, eat, and sleep together, I already disliked my mayor's need for private rooms and particular constructions, so adding a baroness of a distant barony into the mix, with her fondness for anvils and ridiculous room requirements, threw a little bit of a wrench into things for me. So of course Dwarf Fortress promptly rewarded my dwarf normal with the second foreign barony of the fortress, Daubed Fences thus bestowing on her the ability to send me a pointless notification every season or so telling me that she had banned some exports or mandated the construction of some goods. With two baronesses now living in my non-barony of a fortress, I decided to satisfy their room requirements in one fell swoop by constructing a tumorous outgrowth of a home off the side of the dining room that had everything they asked for, even if it wasn't quite the quality they demanded. No good deed ever goes unpunished though, and so Dwarf Fortress gifted a third distant barony to one of my citizens just as the first two baronesses were getting settled in their new homes. This time it was a dwarf named Dusum who became the Baron of Paint Tome. Adding a third and final residence off the end of the noble housing tumor was no problem to accommodate, but as though the game was waiting for me to paint myself into a corner, it was then that I was given the supposed good news from the outpost liaison that my fortress would be becoming a barony in short order, and that I should select a dwarf from my population to inherit such a noble title. Which led to Ablel becoming the baroness of our fortress, and the fourth and final useless noble we would have to deal with. If this had all happened ten months ago, when I didn't have to worry about retreading old ground, I would have treated these nobles the same way that I treated the countess of my first fortress and built some kind of contraption that would feed them to a forgotten beast. I had plenty to work with in my caverns, even if they did keep killing each other. But I've already done that once, and I've been told that variety is the spice of life, and so I decided to try to embrace these nobles and build them the kind of homes they would truly enjoy. Which meant, bedrooms for lazing the day away, offices for pretending to work, tombs for remembering their mortality, and dining rooms for watching the prisoners in the dungeon. I arranged things this way because just about every dwarf convicted of a crime in my fortress had been done in for violating a production order from one of the baronesses, and even though that was my fault because I was the one that had ignored construction mandates for all those years, I couldn't help but throw my dwarves under the bus and build it in a way that turned jail time into a bit of a public spectacle. Really the whole thing was a bit of a public spectacle. I took this screenshot in stone sense to show off how much more space I was able to take up with four gaudy, inefficient, and mildly luxurious noble residences than with the three dormitories that housed the other 200 dwarves in the fortress. But of course for my dwarves, getting placed in the dungeon fishbowl for a couple months was probably worse than the jealousy. Fortunately though, only three of the four restraints in the prison wound up getting filled with dwarves, as my captain of the guard slash hammerer went on a bit of a rogue hammering rampage in the hospital before a fourth dwarf could be locked up. My baron and baronesses didn't seem to mind though. They still got to see the dwarfs that defied them suffering in prison from the comfort of their dining room tables. Of course, as is always the case in Dwarf Fortress, once the nobles were given an inch, they tried to take a mile. They started making ridiculous requests that I couldn't possibly fulfill, and then when I couldn't do things to their exact liking, they just went stark raving mad. I think I preferred feeding them to forgotten beasts. Thanks for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.